Hello, Patrick McKeown here. Thanks so much for supporting our Buteco Clinic channel. Can I ask you a big favor? Would you mind subscribing? And with this, we can support the channel more, we can put out more videos, and it would really mean a lot. Buteco, for me, has been life-changing and life-changing for the people that we're working with, and we would love to see it getting out there. So please subscribe. Thanks very much. Is the Buteco method supported by science? Let's think about, well, what is the Buteco method? It involves breathing in and out through your nose. It involves breathing light and breathing slow and breathing with good recruitment of the diaphragm. So if you th think of it in terms of breathing, all of those functions, breathing in and out through the nose, the benefits far outweigh mouth breathing. In actual fact, there's nothing in the mouth that serves any purpose when it comes to breathing. The, when you think what is in your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, your gums, your heart palate, your soft palate, saliva, and all of those are devoted to eating, for drinking, for speaking, and for social bonding. But nothing in the mouth is devoted for breathing. So the mouth is an emergency for breathing. The nose is where it all happens. Think about the physiological benefits of breathing in the net through the nose, warming the incoming air, moistening the incoming air, better recruitment of the diaphragm, better gas exchange from the lungs into the blood. Also, when you do physical exercise with your mouth closed, you've got increased CO2 in your blood, which in turn helps to dilate your blood vessels, increase blood flow to the heart and brain during physical exercise, and also increase blood flow and oxygen to the tissues. So there's no comparison, nose breathing versus mouth breathing. You know, whether it's during rest, nose breathing induces relaxation, mouth breathing induces stress, so in terms of sleep, when you have your mouth closed, your tongue is able to rest in the roof of your mouth. And also because your lower jaw is forward, your airway is more open. And because your airway is more open, air is able to flow freely to and from the lungs. And that's important because you don't want any restriction to your breathing during sleep because that will take you out of deeper sleep and then you're more likely to wake up feeling um, unrefreshed. So then you might ask, well, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is always kind of being conveyed as this bad gas, that oxygen is good and carbon dioxide is bad. And is that correct? If you think, like, what is the physiological basis of carbon dioxide? What are the primary functions of CO2? It dilates smooth muscle. So you think of smooth muscle embedded in your airways and also in the blood vessels. You think of the airways. You have your trachea, your bronchi. You have your bronchioles. And they subdivide into about 23 different airways different branches of airways. And you have smooth muscle embedded in, in those airways. And if you're breathing too much air and you're getting rid of too much carbon dioxide, that can cause the airways to narrow. So narrowing of the airways is influenced by how much air you breathe and of course carbon dioxide. But it's not just your airways. Think of your blood vessels. We have maybe 50,000 miles of blood vessels throughout the human body. And if we breathe too much air, and we get rid of too much carbon dioxide, our blood vessels constrict. So for example, you might feel that you have cold hands, cold feet, but think about brain function because the brain needs a lot of blood flow. I think it's about 15 to 20% of your cardiac output and it needs a lot of oxygen. It's about 20% of your oxygen. So you think of every breath that you take into your body, 20% of the oxygen that's drawn into your body is going to your brain. So your brain is consuming more energy, more oxygen, than any other organ in the human body. Carbon dioxide is the primary regulator of blood pH. It's not the food that you eat. And blood pH should be 7.365, 7.4. So it's through carbon dioxide and through the role of breathing that homeostasis is maintained, that blood pH is kept at 7.36 or 7.4. What other functions is there of carbon dioxide? Think of the Bohr effect. So the Bohr effect was discovered back in 1904 by a Danish physiologist called Christian Bohr. And his discovery was that when hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood, and hemoglobin is the main carrier of oxygen in the blood, and oxygen needs a carrier because oxygen doesn't dissolve so well in the plasma. Only about 1.5% of oxygen is carried directly in the plasma. So most oxygen, 98.5%, is carried in the blood by hemoglobin. So you can imagine hemoglobin as the carrier of oxygen, but we need hemoglobin to release oxygen to where it's needed. 
and one of the factors that cause hemoglobin to release oxygen is carbon dioxide. As carbon dioxide in the blood increases, blood pH drops, and hemoglobin affinity for oxygen reduces. In other words, hemoglobin starts to release oxygen more readily. So coming back to the science, Buteco method is really harnessing in on the benefits of nasal breathing, which you know, I don't think anybody can dispute um, that the benefits of nose breathing far outweigh the mouth breathing. Um, also in terms of the tolerance of carbon dioxide, and that's getting a lot more attention now. And Buteco was all about building up your CO2 tolerance. Another aspect with Buteco was helping to dampen the stress response and increase the relaxation response. The importance of improving breathing patterns for sleep disorder breathing. So for asthma and for mental health. But you can check the science of this yourself. Go into ChatGPT. Ask what is the physiological mechanism of the Buteco method? What does it do? Is it beneficial? Or is it quackery, for example? Put it into perplexity. And even though the Buteco method has only probably about 25 clinical studies for the application of asthma, and most of them, in fairness, the studies have been very, very positive. The results of the studies have been very positive. It's never, you'll never get 100%, but in the vast majority of them. Here is a breathing technique that's very, very understudied, but don't dismiss it on the basis that it has been understudied. Think about what does the technique do and think about the physiological changes that happen when you practice this and check out the Buteco technique. Just put it into AI and see what AI sends you back. So in terms of a breathing technique, if you want to explore the role of breathing, it may be you want to work with your clients, or for example, you have asthma, or you have panic disorder, anxiety, or sleep issues, um, do your own research. And now with the benefits of artificial intelligence, and of course, not everything that comes from artificial intelligence is correct, cross-check it. So cross-check one off the other, ask it to send you references, check those references, go deeper into it, and you will see that you have a technique here that is absolutely founded on scientific principles. It was developed by a medical doctor. It was put into practice in hospitals throughout Russia for probably about 50 years or so. Um, I'm not sure where it is now in Russia because it's the last time I was there was in 2002, which is quite some time back. It has been used by millions of people. So a technique that's scientifically based, yes? Buteco method.